Well, hello and welcome again. This is Robert Schein, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Schein Wealth Management. Today is the 17th of December. It's a Thursday. We're almost oh, almost to Friday right now, but let's get to the daily insights here that we're following at Blanky Schein Wealth Management, so that you should be too. Thanks for watching. Our first topic today, what traders are watching, what we're paying attention to, what really matters as it relates to how we invest our clients' assets and, and, and investments going through on a go-forward basis, we pay a lot of attention to the Federal Reserve. In fact, yesterday, Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairman, just concluded a two-day meeting. and the press conference, he had a, an exact quote. And it's really important to clue in on what they say because words do matter when it comes to the Federal Reserve because they actually move markets in significant ways. So as of right now, the Federal Reserve Chairman said yesterday, and I quote, if you look at the PE, which is price to earnings, they're historically high. But in a world where the risk-free rate is going to be low for a sustained period of time, the equity premium, which is really the reward you get for taking equity risk, will, would be what you'd wanna look at. And that's unquote by Jerome Powell. So essentially he said, if we look at the price to earnings ratio right now, the PE, and that's a, that's a valuation matrix that we see here as it relates to saying, hey, is the market overvalued? We're seeing markets at all time highs right now. You know, it, it, is it too much? Well, again, the PE, the price to earnings, earnings have the ability from this point forward to expand because they've been so far depressed coming out of this year. So on a go forward basis, the E can expand. So there's um, expansion opportunities there. But he also said the risk-free rate that you're actually getting, uh, the risk that you're gonna take to put in equity markets over the 10-year treasury essentially, or the interest rates, which are gonna be anchored lower for longer until the two mandates are hit. One, back to full employment. We'll talk about the employment picture right now because it's actually getting worse right now. Uh, so the unemployment claims are rising and we'll talk about that in just a second. So there's gonna be, that's really gonna anchor or really dictate the Federal Reserve's move going forward to keeping interest rates lower for longer and as well as inflation. Uh, so that's the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve. So it's very important. What the Federal Reserve just told us is buy stocks, essentially, because he said, ultimately, even though the PE, the price to earnings ratio, has a high valuation, it's going to continue to expand because he's not going to worry about inflation. He's going to worry about employment. So let's get to the employment picture, too. So the second factor we really want to pay attention to is the employment. But most clients say, hey, Rob, what about the employment? It's getting worse. In fact, it's going to continue to get worse because benefits are expiring by year end as well as they expired earlier this summer. And different states have different sort of expiration dates on their own respective unemployment assistance. So that number was, uh, it was a high number this year or this morning. It was continuing off of last week's and it's going to rise. We could still see continuing claims get closer to out of the 800,000 world to a million. Uh, so that's why it's going to force Congress's uh, hand right now to what we believe he'll, they'll get a deal done either this week, early next week, but it'll get done. Uh, I firmly believe that they have really no choice right now because of the unemployment. So bad news is good news as it relates to equity markets because that means there's more money coming down the road for assistance for those people that need it in the travel and the service industries, obviously. But let's look at historic, history will also be a guide. Will markets, can markets, question is, can markets continue to rise when the unemployment claims continue to rise as well at the same time? History has shown, and let's go last two, last two uh, recessions that we saw, especially in unemployment, I've, I've, I've brought this to the forefront before. I really want to continue to uh, bring this to the forefront. And if you watch my daily updates, it's very important to watch this. That in 2008, 2009, right, the Great Recession that we had back then, it took five years for unemployment get, to get back to uh, basically the higher numbers before the recession itself. So to retain back to full unemployment or even beat those numbers, it took five years. All the while, markets continue to set all-time new highs as we recovered from the 2008-2009 uh, recession. Same is true for 2001, 2002. It actually took longer than five years, but markets rebounded, right? We, 2003 markets started uh, a new bull market and it continued ever since. Um, so this is proof most recent history that will show us that, listen, equity markets can continue to rise. And let's just use common sense real quick. Employee, or excuse me, employers are doing more with less, right? So they've laid off employees. They're asking their employees to do more 
basically two jobs for every one employed. Therefore, they add in technology, right? In the future, there could be stimulus or incentives to continue to get the economy to grow. And oftentimes these two, Congress passed uh, stimulus for companies to bring in CapEx exp uh, expenditures, meaning you'll get a tax benefit for actually buying that unit of technology and, and putting it in service in a calendar year and therefore you get the tax write-off, you get the technology, and the technology replaces a job. That's why this takes so long to recover. So the current employees that are retaining their employment are asked to do more with less, and then technology will be also the ultimate replacement. And so the unemployment picture really doesn't predict where the market's gonna go. That's the main take home point here. I need everyone at home to basically make certain that they're not distracted by the headlines because the headlines will continue to be negative as it relates to unemployment. And finally, um, it's a technical sort of dashboard read that we watch here at Blanky Channel Wealth Management for our clients. And it's the uh, spread between the twos and tens of 10-year treasury. Ultimately, don't wanna get too technical, but it's a sign of strength or stability uh, or, or that the markets are functioning properly. Uh, and so the, the spreads are actually, after Jerome Powell's comments in the last, last couple of weeks, uh, they're, they're strong, they're widening. Um, so that's a healthier market itself um, right now. And so we're gonna to continue to pay attention to that because that's really what get ind indicates equity markets going forward when the 10-year the treasury starts having a tantrum, if you will, or doesn't like what the Federal Reserve is actually indicating that they're gonna do next. So right now, after the Federal Reserve's comments yesterday, all things look uh, you know, very positive in the credit markets on a go-forward basis and the twos and tens are, uh, are trending nicely. So we'll continue to monitor that because that could change as it as markets normally do, and that could dictate sort of our, our, our next steps. But as of right now, uh, we're in good standing as it relates to the twos and tens. That's our updates for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys again next time. Take care.